Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. For an upcoming project, I need a tr small tray. Fortunately, in our club meeting, we had a demonstration about a platter. What's the difference? Well, to me, a tray is much flatter, very small rim, very flat bottom, very large base, and flat inside so that you can set stuff in here and still have it contained and not be uh, tipping, if you will, from a curve. So to me it's just a little bit harder to do to get this entirely flat and a large base and it may be not quite as decorative but you know his wood was also twice as big but I'll settle for this that I can do that is perfect for my upcoming project. So let's turn this tray out of bloodwood. The wood for this project is bloodwood, a very hard, dense wood. It is only one inch thick, therefore I do not have any wood to spare, and definitely not enough wood for a screw chuck. So that is the first difference between this project and the club demonstration. Instead, I pull out a threaded wood faceplate and a double stick tape. However, I'm still not confident in it staying put. For more confidence, I added hot melt glue. For even more insurance, I have a rubber stopper on the live center. First task is to trim the rim to round, and then trim a little at what will be the top of my tray. Next, make some marks. The first is the size of my chuck jaws for an expansion mount. Another marks the size of the top rim. Finally, another is the same distance to that rim mark across the bottom of the tray. Another big difference is that my wood is only 9 inches in diameter, in contrast to the 16 to 18 inches in the demonstration. The demonstration used nice thick maple, mine is harder, thinner bloodwood. Now for some cutting. This is for a cove from the rim mark to a corresponding mark on the bottom. This is the first step to an OG curve. Now to cut the mortise in the bottom. I'm cutting the mortise almost a quarter inch deep, for now. Then taper into the mortise, effectively reducing the mortise depth to under an eighth of an inch. My mortise is larger than the demonstration suggested for a platter. However, this is a tray that I will put stuff on. It needs to be as stable as possible. Between the hard wood and the extra wood in the taper, the risk of the mortise splitting out from the expansion pressure is trivial. Finally, round over into the cove, transforming it into an OG curve and cleaning up as much as I can. Finally, pull back the live center and clean out the nub left by the center, mostly with the box scraper, but also the rough part with the spindle gouge. I use a flat disc to check flatness in the bottom of this mortise, then sand and apply wipe-on poly to the bottom. Now, reverse the tray to enable work on the top side. Again, I am keeping the live center padded with a rubber stopper drilled to fit for security. I start with my large bowl gouge. This time, the figure 8 gauge works best to assess thickness because the thin arms fit inside the gap between the chuck jaws. This means that I do not have to dismount to do the check. I switch to a box scraper to tool flat areas.
Finally, pull back the live center and cut out the remaining thick center first with a gouge and finish with the box scraper. I check flatness with a thin disc. When I switch to sanding, I wrap the sandpaper around a small piece of scrap wood for an ad hoc block sander. After all, a tray bottom needs to be flat and smooth. No waves. Finally, wipe, apply wipe on poly to the top side. I like my tray. I plan to incorporate it into a larger project coming shortly. This project definitely needs a tray rather than a platter. However, most of the steps are very similar. Stay tuned. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. I hate to dag, but are you wearing yours at the lathe?